Welcome back, everyone. Now, let's get started. It's no longer news that Nigeria's president is seeking for a second term in office. He is in this contest along with about 20 other presidential candidates. Now, considering what the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari says it met on ground on May 29, 2015, would you say President Buhari deserves a second term in office? Well, we will be looking at this based on three major indices, national security, corruption, and the economy. To help us look into this, we're joined by a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, Honorable Farouk Adamu Aliu, and the Deputy National Chairman North of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Gamawa Garba. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Okay, so real quick, let me start with you, Honorable Farouk. Would you say that President Mohamed Dubari, based on these three indices that we've put out there, security, economy, and anti-corruption, would you say the president deserves a second term? Of course, uh, Mr. President deserves a second term. In fact, uh, uh, let, let's take the three issues now. One, the corruption, the fight against corruption. Um, there has been so much improvement in the way the fight against corruption is fought. You could see that uh, for the first time in this country, now you have people, way up people in the party that are in jail for corruption charges. And you could see that also so much money has been made, so much uh, uh, plugs have been put in place to ensure that uh, there are no thievery uh, anytime. And this time around also, corruption cannot be discussed in this country on the table. Yes, under the table because you know it's still Nigeria. So, so I think as it relates to the fight against corruption, we've done very well and we're doing very well. You know, some people say it's selective, and I laugh. You see, we are all Nigerians, and if we believe in this country, if anybody in the opposition party thinks that we as a government are after those that are against the party or in the other party, okay, what happened when PDP was in power? We didn't say they were being selective because, look, this is a country that needs to continue. There should be continuity. One government is working and the other one comes to continue. We should be talking about selective. And look, even if anybody thinks that it's selective, someday, one day, APC shall not be in power, you know, till death do us part, which means, which means if only people in the opposition are being targeted now, we, there's still progress. Some people have been targeted. So some people are being prosecuted. And I can mention one, two, three, four, five, up to 10 persons that have affiliation or 100% APC members have been charged to court. And they're in court. And they're being investigated as well. Every day, day in, day out. In my state now, EFCC, it's, it's, it's you know, APC control state. It's conduct, conducting searches in local government in my state, Jigao state. So, I mean, how can anybody come say it's selective? So, I don't agree it's selective. We are on. We're doing very well. And the Nigerian people can see that, yes, fight against corruption is on. Senator Garba, would you agree with him that this is the fact? Completely no. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, it is known to every Nigerian that there are people who are uh, not supposed to be freely moving now because of corruption cases in the country. But they are simply allowed to, uh, you know, exercise, you know, their uh, constitutional uh, right of uh, freedom to move around because they are members of the uh, All Progressive uh, Congress, which is the leading party in the country. And um, I do believe you will agree with me and uh, Nigerians that uh, there are governors who are ordinarily supposed not to be in uh, any uh, uh, position or power now because they have served the eight years of their tenure and uh, they are not being charged to court because they defected to the uh, All Progressives uh, Congress prior to the uh, 2015 election. And uh, those that are in uh, PDP, like uh, the case of today of uh, Papayo Shea, and even that uh, he defected to uh, APC, Nigerians believe that uh, he wouldn't have been taken to court. So honestly, the uh, fight against corruption in Nigeria is selective, and uh, laws are supposed to be for every Nigerian, supposed to be uh, imposed on all citizens, not people that are in opposition party. Now, Senator Garba, if I just, let me just stay here with you. There was something he, um, 
Honorable Ali, you said about when the PDP was I, I in need, power. I need, I need to respond. I, I, I need to, let, let, me give, let me give some statistics. Let me give some statistics. In the National Assembly today, we have Senator Goche, who is a serving senator of APC. He's in court. We have Senator, I mean, former governor. We have Senator Abdullahi Adamu, serving senator, former governor of ATS in National State. In jail, we have Senator Darie of APC. In jail, we have Jolie Nyami. So what is my brother here talking about? <laughs> this government, it's after anybody that has corrupt cases against him. And look, you know, you have to understand that, look, there are processes. These, the PDP is the same party that says we go overboard, we don't follow rule of law. What do you do with persons that are taken to court? And if the court grants you bail, just like Fayou said today, he's been granted bail and he's going to go free. So, so what, what, what is he talking about? As far as fight against corruption is concerned, Nigerians know and they see, they are bearing us witness that look, it is true, we are fighting vigorously to ensure those that are caught with corruption cases are charged to court. And Honorable Ali, we see, we since you jumped anything. in here... We can't me, just send them to jail like that. If I may come in here, since you jumped in, let me put this to you. There are some allegations about certain members of the president's cabinet, and they seem to be walking around free, and I'm sure that's what Senator Gariba is hooking on to. Which one? Come again. Allegations against, about, against some members of the president's cabinet, some that do not have NYC license, um, certificates. There are those who are who were indicted by commissions of inquiry, and they are still working on, and they are still part of the president's cabinet. I'm sure that's what Senator Garba is looking on I, to. No, no, no. Well, I, I assure you, anybody, anybody that has corruption cases, including ministers. Now, these are mere allegations. Like when you talk about Kemi, you know, she confessed. Yes, she did something wrong, and she's being investigated. And you will see sooner or later she's going to be charged to court if she's found to have done anything wrong. The other minister who is also there is also, you know, he went to court. He went to court to challenge federal government and NYC. So these are processes that have to be followed. If we don't follow process, then you said, look, we are being high-handed. So, so I want people to understand that, look, we are following the rule of law at due process. Okay, that's, uh, Senator Garba. When um, Anubar Ali yeah. was talking, he mentioned something that when the PDP was in part, it's, this was the same processes sort of that they also had going in the fight against corruption. In other words, that the PDP wasn't even working as hard as they are working in the fight against corruption. Do you agree with him? Well, completely no, because um, the issue of Joel Nyami and uh, Joshua Daria were introduced by the, uh, the, the PDP government during the letter. Former president, a good like Jonathan. And um, in fact, like Daria, we served the seven senate together, and uh, he came to the eight senate as a uh, PDP member. But when the issue came up, he decided to uh, decamp from the uh, People's Democratic Party to the PDP. While already the case was there, you know, uh, mentioned in court. So it was not introduced by the All Progressive uh, Congress. And uh, let us take the issue of the former secretary to the government, which he has done something wrong in this country, and it is known to every Nigerian. He was indicted, and uh, the highest punishment President or the government could do was just to sack him out from the SGF office. And he is moving freely without prosecution. Moving freely or not, as they say, there's a, everyone has a right to freedom of movement. Do you think they should be restricted because they have cases to answer? Is that what you're implying? They should. Of course, yes, they should. They should be arraigned in court. After hearing the case, they are, I know they are available offenses. They should be granted bail, but uh, allowing somebody just, he has committed offense like that, and then you just sack him out of office without prosecuting him, it, it does not send any signal, good signal to Nigerians. But you do agree that some of these cases have been going on since 2007, and they are still on. Some of them are on, on bail, even from 2007. That's what I said. The cases were, the cases were introduced by the PDP government before the inception of this government. So PDP, in fact, if it is fight against corruption in Nigeria, it was an act of National Assembly that, uh, you know, established the EFCC, the ICPC, and all the Code of Conduct. So it is uh, a known fact to Nigerians that PDP was even more serious to fight corruption than the APC. Because uh, it was the party, it was the party, the, the, the party that was ruling then under the uh, Obasanjo's time that introduced 
the bill which enacted all right senator garba uh, senator garba if you if you just let me here we'll have to take a moment and go on a quick break when we'll come back we'll continue to focus on these three indices but this time we'll move to the economy of the two candidates of the pdp and the apc that have already been produced as presidential candidates which one of them would better handle the economy we'll be back shortly please don't go away <laughs>